Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Show and Tell What the Hell. Today we're going to be talking about um, Commander Karg. Yes, from the Super 7 Masters of the Universe Collector's Choice line. And we are looking at a picture of Karg here. Um, I wanted to get him out of the way because I already have this figure, but in a different color. Now we are going to compare, first of all, how he looks inside the box. Because I got two for some reason. Because I like Karg, so I didn't think that they were going to make this version of Karg. I didn't. And so I was happy with this one because I love Karg. I think he's a great character. I even made my own custom Karg at one point that someone ended up buying. So, um, yeah, this is... Uh, now, notice, this is the 10th anniversary, 2008-2018. Karg, Evil Inquisitor with a horrible hook figure. Commander Karg, Evil Master of Cruelty. Um, I wonder if the bios are the same. No, they're different. Uh, we can go over it. Look, the pictures are the same. You want me to read them? I'll read them. Or you can pause them and go through them. I'll go really fast. Karg loyally serves Skeletor as a cruel interrogator of the Snake Mountain, inspiring countless nightmares with a schoolish... I'm not going to go through the whole thing. They're just different. I think they... Um, uh, this one talks about the Cosmic Key. This one talks about the Prison Star. Okay. And kept in solitary confinement. And where the ravages of age and isolation turned his hair white and his skin a ghastly ashen color. Hmm. Yes, the evil warriors uh, freed him. Yes, um, that's interesting. The horror cough plague. I like that. Um, okay, well, we're going to open this guy up, and I'm going to show the other Karg figure. That's cool that that, that uh, they try to make it to where you get this Karg. Young Karg, the adventures of young Karg, and uh, the aged and gristled and uh, horribly disfigured. Oh, he was already horribly disfigured. Karg with a brand new hook. So, let us open him with our special opener. Um, where is it? I'm not going to put you all through that, but I'm going to pause it. Magic of editing. All right, and so we are back, and uh, there's something about Karg that I really like a lot. Um, and there's, uh, I've, you know, a lot of people were complaining that there was new characters in the movie when it came out. A lot of people were like, well, who are these grade A or C grade uh Bad guys, where's Merman? Where's Trapjaw? Where's, uh, I don't know, where's Jitsu? Beastman was there, but he looked weird. That'd be a good question. Would y'all want to see a Beastman? Now, of course, he has this accessory, this little dagger thing. Uh, you can't put it anywhere, but that's fine. Um, <clears throat> it's essentially the same figure as we got before. Now, I realized. I, at first, when I first saw him, I said, well, why are they redoing it? Well, he does look a lot more movie accurate. They gave him the movie accurate coloring. They gave him the, the little hook here. Um, so he looks a lot more like his, uh, a lot more like the way he did in the movie. Um, it, 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 everything else is pretty much the same. Um, same uh, furry pimp robe. Nice big 80s hair. It looks like a... Was it Michael Jackson that had, like, someone in his band that had hair like this, and it was a lady? Or it was, a uh, uh, like, Tina Turner from uh, Beyond Thunderdome had this kind of hair, too. I always liked he had this weird bat-like goblin face. It reminded me of one of the creatures from Labyrinth or from uh, the movie Legend. Uh, he looked like he could fit in that. Um, so I always liked Karg. He thought he was a creepy little addition to the, to the He-Man movie. It reminded me of other movies... I thought he was a cool design and a cool character. Now, um, yeah, there's not a lot to say about him except that, uh, except for, as far as you know, we're talking about the other figure. Why did they do it? Like, what what happened? What was the story? Why did they um, go with this color? Uh, well, I guess since they got the license or they're able to get permissions to make a more movie accurate version of the character. Um, they decided, I guess we'll go ahead and do that because we got this originally, right? So the best they can do with Karg is to give him a more, is, is to make him, give him details like the movie, but give him the cart, give him the comic book. I can't even talk today. Sorry, people give him the comic book appearance, the comic book coloration. And, um, to me as a Karg fan, this was good enough. I was happy with this. I said, okay, this is going to have to do. 
And I'm fine with it. Let me check real quick. Does he have that? He does have that wrist swivel. This one has a wrist. For some reason, they gave Karg a wrist swivel, which is fine. Same armor, same everything. Uh, hook, again, is different. Now, this was the placeholder. This was, I, I actually kind of like the eyes a little bit more on this Karg. On the left one, it's kind of wild. Um, there you go. Focus, focus. Um, a lot of the... Looking at the paint job here, it looks a little kind of... I don't want to say sloppy, but a little uh, chunky. Um, it's not too bad, though. I like it. There's more detail in the... Um, in the, uh, the... I don't know what kind of material looks like aluminum foil. Or it looks like that stuff that, you know... <clears throat> for, like, when you're, like, working with AC units. Like, some sort of HVAC sort of stuff. But anyway. So... I guess they were thinking, they said, hey, um, this is this is the card that we're going to have. We're going to put them out. So they're able to get special permissions. And uh, they said, well, we have the option of making a more film accurate card. Should we do it? So it's one of those situations that you just can't win. You get uh, certain uh, fans that'll say, oh, uh, I already have a card. Why the hell is Super 7 going to charge me? Or why does Super 7 want me to buy another one that just looks slightly different? Because if you they didn't do it, <laughs> if they didn't actually make this happen, uh, you would have gotten fans saying, how come we didn't get a card that looked more movie accurate? So, yeah, you can't win on situations like that. That's just part of the fandom, right? Um, I would have been upset had we not gotten this. I did initially think, oh, I already got a card. I'm going to have to, why do I have to buy another one? But then seeing this option here, I was like, okay, fine. Now, there would have been some other people. Had this been the original Karg, people said, well, come we're not going to get a more comic book accurate Karg. Huh? So um, I think given the circumstances, this was a good move, right? Someone said, well, this is wasted. They could have done Beastman and now we're never going to get a Beastman. Okay, fine. That's that's a good point, me. Uh, but let's, um, yeah. Of course, I, you know, he has the same articulation as the other Karg. Same sort of quality. Um, it feels like a classics figure. A lot of people talk about how Super 7's plastics feel a lot different. This one in particular does feel like your standard classics figure. Uh, nice kind of soft gummy hair. Not super gummy. Same thing with the cape. Uh, I wish they had put some details on the inside of it because that's what shows the most. Um, but I'm not going to be too nitpicky with it because I already kind of have... But let's bring him out with some of his buddies. Hey, what's your name? Oh. Ah. Uh, damn it. Dropping shit all over the floor. Or the fucking floor. All right, so I'm bringing out... Um, what's cool about the Blade figure is that he does kind of look already like his movie counterpart. So let's get Blade right here. And uh, let's get Sarat over here. I always liked this guy. Thought he was a badass. Do I got the right gun for him? Y'all tell me. Keep forgetting. Now this looks fucking great. Oh my god. Now this is what I've been wanting to see for decades now. Um, I always wanted this crew. These guys are badass. Dropping a sword. Yeah, this is cool. Now, would it be cooler with Evelyn and Beastman? Sure. But this right here, on its own, just looks great. Now, I already got a Classics Beastman. We could just pretend that uh, these guys uh, are part of the Masters of the Universe universe as we know it. And we can forget about the movie. And just pretend that these guys exist in Skeletor's crew, like they're new characters or something. Um, yeah, I would have liked to have a card when I was a kid. I never could get a Sarad because he was so hard to find. I saw him again. I saw him once at a J.C. Penny. I really wanted him, but I was like, "Well, I'm already collecting other stuff. I'm already getting Thundercats and uh, whatever's left of the Transformers." I think I remember at the same time that uh, the Pretenders were coming out. And I really wanted, uh, what's this goddamn name? 
looking at him right now. Uh, bludgeon. I really wanted bludgeon. Could never get him. Uh, but yeah, this is uh very impressive to me. I'm very happy. I thank Super Seven for getting this guy out because this is the crew. This is like the Ginyu Squad. These are the three dudes. These are the ones that you want to see. You know, would it again? Would it have been nice if we saw Beastman in there? Sure. Or some uh, Skeletor troopers, whatever they're called. Evil Lynn, sure, but these are three unique characters. There's never any other version, with the exception of him, comic book character, but there's never any other version of these guys. So, um, yeah, I like I like the fact that I can now add these guys in my collection, and I uh, can't wait to get to the next episode where I'm going to be talking about one of the Skeletors. I'm going to save He-Man for last, but anyway, guys, if you liked this, then um, then I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you next time. We'll see you later on.